Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of TCG Talk, back today with another video, and in today's video we're going to be going over some of the spoilers that were revealed at the Colleen Warsaw, as well as some Enigma kind of card evaluations, try to give you a decent baseline based off some of the cards I've been messing with here uh, since the cards have been spoiled from the Blitz decks, and at least try to give you a baseline, I guess, if you're brand new to the class or someone who's working on the class like I am myself kind of what we learn together and stuff like that and maybe you can give some valuable input as a community as well uh but if you're new to the channel welcome thank you so much for stopping by hopefully enjoy your stay if you're a long staying supporter thank you so much as always feel free to check out the discord down below as well as the channel membership and we'll get right into it so the first thing we have is the spoilers uh from the calling warsaw these were spoiled this morning uh we have one max card essentially i mean it can be used in more than just max but it's probably gonna be a max card and then three tech Lavosin cards uh some heroes that needed some good support i think not because they're like terrible heroes but because they help they both have like a key weakness right so this is the one for max supercell it's a blue block two mechanologist action card uh it says it's x is the cost so you declare the cost you're going to do so if x is three it's three uh put x steam counters on x target hyper drivers you control um create a hyper driver token with uh x steam counters if x is three or greater you may shuffle a construct mechanoid from your banner stone into your deck so this takes up your action point but it's very powerful i'm reading this correctly so if you declare let's just say three here right you block with two cards and you attack with the, and then you play this uh it will put you'll put three steam counters on three target hyper drivers you control you'll create a hyper driver with three extra steam counters and then if x is three or greater you may shuffle the construct mechanoid from your banish zone so let me know in the comments down below the way i'm reading this is like the first line of text says put x steam counters on x target hyper drivers you control um so you put three steam counters on three target hyper drivers you control so all you gotta do is pay three to basically put nine counters on i, I feel like i'm reading that wrong is it dispersed out let me know in the comments below I'm, I'm gonna get the clarification on this but regardless of that first line of text the second and third are the really important ones too which is create x hyper driver token with x steam counters um and so you create a hyper driver token with three steam counters on it if you declare three and then you also are able to shuffle a construct mechanoid from your banish zone back into your deck this is really good for max because one of the negatives to mechanoid right was there's a little bit of variance on do you banish your your mech car your mechanoid cards are not right when you're boosting because you need to boost to get the hyper drivers and do all that other stuff so this allows max to go get those right and eliminate some of that variance that he had when it comes to getting rid of his hyper drivers so really powerful card it does take over your action point but it helps you set up at least if i'm reading this correctly yeah if you declare three then you're going to put three steam counters on three target hyper drivers you control granted you have to control the hyper drivers so maybe that's kind of like the you know the give and take right if you already have three hyper drivers you're probably not playing this to be honest with you so maybe that's why it's not as crazy powerful as you would think but really solid card i really like it uh it does take up your action point but it's really good to help eliminate some of that variance that max had so there's that one then we have a uh, equipment suite for tech Austin with some arcane barrier which is huge for tech Austin. it was his biggest weakness was ab heroes because he couldn't run t uh ab and uh go into singularity at the same time like there's just no way he could do that so it was like he couldn't play to his ultimate game plan while i'm playing against ab heroes a lot of them are running like rusted relic and crazy stuff in order to try to keep be able to do it uh but this says if you have a base it's a headpiece mechanologist instant equipment doesn't cost anything to play which is very nice if you have a base head equipped transform it into this then equip this um transform it into this and equip this when this is equipped put up to one mechanologist action card from your banisher on top of your deck uh that's pretty good right you can go get a terminator tank i, I believe so put one mechanologist action card from your banisher and yeah so if you actually banish the terminator tank or you know a key card that you want to have you can just put it right back on top of your deck and draw into it and it has ab1 so you're able to put this on um and then still transform the singularity while having that arcane barrier which is very nice uh same thing for the chest piece if you have this a base chest equipped you can transform it into this and equip it when this is equipped the next attack action card uh you play a certain cost one less to play pretty good because you're 
basically playing a blue to get ne negative one to your next attack, which could be really good. Um, especially if you're like running a more low of the ground tech Lavosin, you could probably possibly play something for free or just for one resource. And that's, that's really nice. So really excited about this one also has AB one. And then finally the last one, this one had a little bit worse picture cause they haven't came out with like the official art of this yet. Uh, Evo short circuit. It's the arm piece. Uh, it does the same thing as the chest and the head when it comes to equipping and it says when this is equipped deal one damage to any target which is good if someone has allies or you know ward or something like that you're able to target something doesn't say target hero doesn't say target hero or ally it's any target on the field which is very nice and it has arcane barrier one so very good equipment speed for tech Lavosin. super excited about this let me know in the comments down below what you think of these cards i think they're all really solid upgrades this set in general like the the expansion slot cards have all like really hit like really hit. i mean if we look at part the misfill for a second uh like all of these cards are super good um we gotta scroll down uh you know visit gold main state banger card golden anvil still kind of tbd but it has the uh, the option to be really good you know all the ones we just went over long draw half glove is pretty good uh it with riptide and azalea right will it replace bullseye bracers who knows but it does have some applications that i think make it really good murky waters you know helping uh flip tide become more of a thing and then these three are just ridiculous kindle uh, horror and eulogy so super excited about those but getting into enigma uh now that we talked about the spoilers enigma's been really fun um she feels the most complete so far without her power cards so i'm really scared to see what her power cards are because she's already pretty good i think um she has some really unique interactions i guess the the one thing i want to say about her that i really enjoy whether you're a new player or a current player maybe thinking about her is she forces you to play the game on a different axis like illusionist does but she has so many decision points right and it's not like a spectra like decision point where it's like a feels bad like no like every point makes sense you know what war do you put down when do you put it down how do you get your on play triggers to work how do you get your like when ward leaves like popping the ward in the correct order in order to get their effects because they're the last one on the board stuff like that is really cool she does stuff in the resolution step like me i'm a new flesh and blood player right i'm an aggro go burr guy um and i learn every every month on new stuff but i didn't understand how much you can manipulate the resolution step in flesh and blood until i started playing this deck a little bit and prism as well but the fact like i had a a ward card in arsenal and i got hit with a uh disable which bottoms your arsenal when it hits or um when it deals damage so damage was dealt and then the disable trigger went on the stack during the resolution step and i was able to then play it from arsenal and get some different stuff going on because what i wanted to do is i wanted to pop the current ward on board so i had to let damage hit first that way i could get the on playability of the ward card in arsenal and i was able to play that on the stack of the disable trigger before it bottom the card so like little stuff that you just learn is so cool uh and i've been really enjoying that as far as cards i've been really liking um this card actually is pretty decent i don't know if it's better than wave of reality or you know there'll probably be a more like a legendary or maybe even just like a more used card but the fact that one it's cloaked which is really cool you instant speed pay one to turn it face out to put a plus one counter on an aura you control awards so it could be like a combat trick but it also has ward one and i found as an assassin player uh this card is very annoying because when i see that card face down at the start of the game i know that i cannot use flick knives until that card is gone or I can, but I'm not going to get the value out of it because they just flip it at instant speed, use the ward one, and then say, I don't care. You're not popping my ward I care about. So very, very good card. Uh, Hay Shelter is absolutely bonkers. It, in my opinion, it's the best card in the deck uh, that's not like a, a majestic power card or something like that right now. Uh, this being ward four on when you pitch a blue and being ward two is so, so good um, because you're wanting to pitch anyway on, on both turns a lot. A lot of the time anyway so a lot of time you get the plus ward effect keep in mind with this card this card's ward will change right if you play this on their turn pitching a blue and uh it has ward four and it doesn't pop and then on your turn if you haven't pitched a blue yet this now is a ward one so yet until you pitch a blue again so you have to be careful because the ward changes on this uh a lot of these are really cool waxing specter you know if you pitch the blue card this turn this enters with a plus one counter so it's a one for four attack uh once it enters and again knowing how to order these triggers like when this leaves the arena if you pitch the blue card this turn create a spectral shield token this one you know doesn't have like a 
you have to like order it to the last one but some of these do care about being the last one that dies i think it's like uh let me see here which one cares about being the last one to die there's a couple that care about that um yeah when the series read it or be the first one if you have no other illusions or is create a spectral shield it's like being able to order when you put things in and when you take them out is very very important here um and i'm super excited to like just mess with her and get better at the game some of the big winners for me have been hey shelter is really really good um the instant speed or or the store that when it leaves it gives it lets you play something at instant speed has been really really nice um that's just been yeah so like at blue it's really good so when this leaves the arena if you control no other illusionist auras you may play the next aura with cost zero this turn as though it were an instant if you do it in the arena with a plus one counter so you can play shimmers of silver and haze bending at instant speed with this card at blue which is just unbelievable like so so good um i've had i had a but a game against pierre where i he played shimmers at the end of my turn at instant speed because he popped this and again this says when this leaves the arena if you control no other no other illusions for us so you have to make sure this pops last and you have nothing else uh aura wise on there uh because you know it can it can really mess with you and you gotta notice that it says if you control no other illusions or it doesn't say non-token or token so you can't have spectral shields up either because they are also a token so this has to be the last thing that pops uh in order to get that effect so really cool the last card i think so like my, the big cards i've been really enjoying is hay shelter for the defensive value and offense when you can use it um this to be able to play your shimmers and haze spinning and instant speed and the last one's been astral etchings this one's pretty nuts like put plus it's a illusions action um put three plus one counters on target aura with ward you control if you control a spectral shield you may play this as though it were an instant this is basically an attack reaction or a combat trick in your deck like you swing with a war even a even with something with a plus one counter you swing with a spectral shield for plus one uh and it's coming in for two and then all of a sudden like they're and they're at two or three let's say they're at three or four like even four and you're like they're like okay take two and you play this in the reaction step give it plus three it's coming in for five all of a sudden and they just kill you just kill them so it's really good at red i think it's gonna be ran at red and blue personally red it might only be ran at like a one or a two of but blue i think it's definitely ran uh more it's it's basically like almost like the agile wind up uh thing with uh mandible claw but even less apparent sometimes been really enjoying that one but she has a lot of powerful cards she forces you to play on a different axis and i'm just really excited about her um it helps you improve as a player but definitely check out hey shelter uh, astral etchings and vengeful apparition i think those are my three favorite out of the ones but let me know for anyone that's been you know a seasoned illusionist player or someone that maybe has played the class a lot let me know what you're most excited about from a card perspective i'd love to hear it um and yeah hopefully we can see what power cards we get this weekend and all these opinions will change and that'll be the fun part about it uh but i would love to hear your feedback so if you like this type of content please leave a like comment or subscribe if not me it's totally fine go to another creator leave a like comment subscribe on their stuff so we can get more people seeing this game and i'll see y'all next time on tc talk thank y'all so much